Hey guys, Lilith Tools here, back with another tool haul. It's a great one today. I'm going to call this my first estate sale haul, uh, as Tom Gunn is known for. Um, wasn't listed as an estate sale, it was a says garage sale, but it was a whole uh, family of people of all trades and of tools over the years, and it was just a ton of tools. There was almost nothing else there. And uh, we got some real gems. Uh, everything you can see uh, cost me a total of $40 Canadian. Uh, I did like Tom Gunn. I got myself a box, found it there, loaded all my stuff in, brought it up to the guy, started taking stuff out and uh, telling them which tables I took it from. There were some tables for $0.50, cents, dollar, $2, etc. And we got down near the end, still about 10, 15 items. Uh, and he said, ah, 40 bucks, that's good. So it was probably... If we went by his original asset price, probably about 65 bucks of stuff here. But uh, we all know based on those prices that we scored good. Um, did have to restart this video. That's why a few things are out. So we'll just start back from the beginning. Uh, I got a couple socket trays. Uh, 3 8 standard and a quarter SAE. A couple broken pegs. I don't remember. I didn't. I was, I was ecstatic at this sale. I didn't have time to look for everything perfectly but these are I believe are a buck a piece I do with the broken pegs I think it's worth that uh, these are power fist brand made in Taiwan they're just like the Hansons except they're made in Taiwan take that for what you will and uh oh you didn't see anything maybe, maybe you did what's this guy oh, cheap China ratchet hey huh junk wait a minute this is a proto professional US of A this sucker's like brand new. A little bit of surface rust, but she's smooth. Like butter. This is one of those designs. You'll see these on all sorts of cheap China stuff. It's one of those things that, uh, what do they say? Often duplicated, never replicated. Might look like it, but it ain't the same thing. This is a beauty. This is my first classic Pearhead Proto. Coarse tooth, but very strong mechanism. It's a nice ratchet. You see how nice the knurl is. Super uniform. Very happy to get that guy. This was on the $2 table. This is $2, guys. $2. Just leave it at that. Uh, where can he sit so you can see him nicely? Here you go. Uh, here. I know uh, Big Vic was interested in this guy. This is an ETF Canada. This is an oldie. Uh, early around the 50s. Forged ETF steel. And this is a nail puller. So you can go like this. Jam this down in the wood. Oh, you see that dust come out of there? <laughs> uh, jam this down in the wood. Crank down onto your nail. And then oh, reef her out real hard. Uh, I didn't have one of these. I wanted them for a long time. A lot of people want a lot of money for these. It's two dollars. Uh, yeah, I can't believe it. This was, I think, in terms of quality and what I paid for it, and also quantity. This is probably one of my best hauls, uh, at least for used items. Uh, here's where I got cut off. Uh, this is a basin wrench. This is for getting up under your your sinks and the like. Get in there and crank down, loosen, tighten, etc. It says uh, Covers Co. on it. Uh, I don't really care about the brand. I just I actually need one of these. I didn't have one. And this was a dollar. So there's that guy. Not sure if it's uh, US of A or anything. I don't think it is. But it works. And it seems decent quality. It's better than the, the El Cheapos. They're like half the thickness. I've seen those just break on people. Let's get this guy out of here. Look at this beauty. This is a Marples. Also, well, probably you can buy the same thing now, just under Irwin. Um, but it is a, I believe it's just a, uh, they only use, you see it's, but uh, it's got a little blade. See there. And I believe, I was going to say this is a, uh, oh geez, I can't think of it. There's a specific name for this type of saw. And uh, I don't have one. And this is a good brand. So, yeah, that was it. 50 cents. 
Like, I don't care if it's missing a tooth, but it's 50 cents. Like, I mean, you, you guys know where I'm coming from. Uh, I guess we're just going to hop all over. Guys, this is a find. Needs some work. Needs a battery. Look at that, guys. IP67. Water resistant. Sterret digital caliper. It's surface rusted, but it's smooth as butter. The tips align. There's no light coming through. Um, yeah. I believe these are like close to $200. Correct me if I'm wrong, but... Wow. And this was a dollar. Uh, the... Your, your depth measurement rod is a... It's a bit loose. But that's not... A non-issue. I'm just happy to have this. So there's that guy. Set him there. <coughs> uh, for some of you collector aficionados, here we have another nail puller. Nail puller, pry bar, beater stick. Whatever you feel like using it for. I kind of like these ones. Where they have a tiny little face like that because they can be a little tappy tap tap. Um, no specific branding on this. It says 300, so I'm assuming 300 millimeters. Um... But uh, you can see this logo here. It's uh, kind of like a rocking horse kind of thing. I'm just going to really make that out. Yeah, it's a rocking horse. Like a, a horse with a curve. Like, you know, like little kids sit on goes like this. Uh, do you guys know uh, what brand this is? <laughs> is it the brown rocking horse? I think I've heard of that. I'm not sure. But uh, it's definitely old. And it's in great condition. Uh, oh. Hold on guys. Never mind. Japan. K2. So we'll see. Alright. Let's keep her moving. Uh, another beauty. From ETF. I don't know if you guys can make that out. This is St. Catharines. St. Catharines, Ontario. Ontario is a province of Canada. Down to the east. Down where our truckers were recently. This is a gorgeous pair. Great condition. There's those guys. I believe all the pliers were a dollar. Or not all of them, but most of them. Uh, here we have an old pair of uh, Vaco. Vaco. Uh, Snap ring pliers. Echo 22. 231. Uh, other than these handles being really nasty feeling and looking. Uh, the function is perfect. They're smooth as butter. There's those. I think these are actually on the 50 cent table. So there's those guys. <coughs> I don't know how I'm finding these. But this is a lobster. A new lobster. 150 mil little crescent wrench. Adjustable wrench. 6 inch. <coughs> from Japan. And needs a little cleanup. And <clears throat> pardon me, guys. You know, you can get a tickle in your throat and it just won't go away. I'm actually going to take a quick little sip of water here because we have lots to go through. Uh, that's better. All right. Yeah. There's that guy. Uh, do I have it handy? There he is. We, uh, Pick this up in another haul. This is a 250 mil lobster. And you can see there's a logo. Thinking this one's newer, just the way it's forged and whatnot. But yeah, this is an awesome find. I believe that was on the 50 cent table. Uh, another one from the 50 cent table. <laughs> another great find. This is 20 bucks all day. It's a USA made Klein insulated screwdriver, flat blade. Tips in decent shape. I just needs a quick sand for reprofile, and she's good to go. Klein drivers are always nice. They're quality. And, uh, yeah, this is in here tight still. Sometimes I've seen the insulation on these insulated ones uh, want to come off. But yeah, this is on here good. 50 cents. Score. Now, guys, what exactly is this guy? Now, if we look here... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong spot. This is a KNU Vice, new Vice. 
It is a C2404 bracket L bracket. What do we got in here? FF1 right there. Um, I'm, ju I'm just wondering exactly what you would guys would call this, but what a unit. Like, just in general, like this thing is heavy. So we've got a screw here. So I'm gonna just go down here on the on the bench. You guys can see. I'll thread this up a bit. So hold on. Just want to see if this works. How I think it works. So I can get this on there. Sort of my head was in the shot. Get this on there. Then you have a lock nut you can put up, and then you can quickly lock on parts. It's like a vice grip, like a giant vice grip. I just realized we're way out of shot. Sorry about that. You guys could see this. Here's the bench around the bottom. Where can I put the handle so you guys could see it? But uh, it goes on, and then it locks down. You see that goes on and then locks like a locking plier, like a vice grip. So cool. You see that there upside down, two bucks. Super duper cool, vintage, heavy duty. Guarantee I can find a use for that. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, here's a first for me. Uh, in two ways, I do believe. You can make that out. This is a Greenlee. Insulated driver, slotted, 1000 volt rated, VDE. Vita, Germany, let's go! So if you guys don't know, Vita is a quality manufacturer of screwdrivers in Germany. And they make the screwdrivers for Matco. So, yeah. I can see why people like a Matco drivers now. This is a great feeling handle. It's small, but I like it. That's sweet, 50 cent table. Oh, this haul. <laughs> uh, here, we have a pair of calipers. Dirty, but great shape overall. This is a, I don't know if you guys can make it out. It's a Union Tool Company from Orange? Yeah, Orange, Massachusetts. Uh, USA. Very cool. 50 cent table. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, I know I have, I can't think of your name right now, so sorry about that. But I know I have, uh, well, I'm sure multiple, but I know I have an Instagram follower that loves this brand. PNC. This is model number 6238 US of A. And this is a breaker bar. Overall shape is great. Ears aren't spread. Still rotates. Uh, ball detent. Let's check it real quick. Nice and tight. Tight like a tiger. <laughs> anyway, there's that guy. I believe that one was a two buck one. Uh, I don't know if any of you were looking at that handle. Is that shape looks kind of familiar, right? Like, I don't know. I saw this actually. I was I was at the sale with my mom. She saw this for me. And uh, well. I'll just let you know, this is incredibly light. I wonder why. Huh. Huh. Ooh. Stiletto hammer, guys. <laughs> Overall, like, really good shape. A little loosey-goosey. Um, I guess I'll just throw these in. I actually just picked these up to fix one of my grandpa's hammers. Some wedges. And, uh, yeah. This is, this is going to be probably my new user hammer. I'll try to give it a good cleanup. What a beauty. Two dollars. <laughs> you see old stilettos like this at pawn shops. Guys want a hundred dollars for them. Two bucks. I, I swear this, this haul is just incredible. I guess some of the, the highest end brands out there. Things I've been wanting for so long. They're just either out of my price range or I can't justify it kind of thing. But jeez. I'm a happy camper today. Uh, as a lot of you know seeing this real quick. This is a. Uh, Cheapy, it's a power built. Uh, this is a serpentine belt tool set, complete set, two dollars. Didn't have one of these, 
Is there better ones out there? Yes. Will this get the job done? Yes. And two dollars goes with all my automotive tools. I'm very happy. <coughs> Pardon me. Da, 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 da. Armstrong USA. Gone but not forgotten. This is a inch and an eighth. 1172L. This is a long wrench. Overall very nice. We'll put the die grinder to use, clean up this head, or the, the faces of the open end, and I think this will be a user. This is the beauty of a wrench. It's overall in great shape. So there's that guy. Uh, this was on the dollar table. So yeah, there's that. I'll pull this out now. We're actually needing some pain. Tie up the snowmobile so no one takes her over the summer. And uh, yeah, got some nice chain. 50 cents. That would uh, be close to $10 or more at the homeless death spot. So there's that. Also, I would have known what this is without Scout Crafter. I believe I know what this is. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I believe this is a wheel dressing tool, like for your bench grinder. You bring that up and. It uh, gets the gunk stuck out of your wheel and makes sure it's flat and everything. I believe that's what this is. Sure looks like it because it looks like it's been ground on. And this is a... I've never never seen this brand. I mean, okay, so we got Hamilton, Canada. Hamilton, Ontario. Canadian Desmond. Huntington number one. What a unit. Uh, I'm, I'm in shock, some of, some of these tools. New, old, in between, they're just. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next up, uh, puller, gear puller, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's definitely been used. It's bent, it's used. Uh, gear pullers, though, of, of any sort, are not cheap. This is a uh, four inch. Um, and someone put it together backwards or just threaded it way down. Um, but yeah. I should probably straighten up these and this will be a user. It's on a 50 cent table. All day, every day, boys. Let's go. <clears throat> I actually think we might have two pair of these. Now, I'm going to just bring, bring these in. Oh, do we have a rag handy? Oh, the rag handy. It's just which one is dirty enough to use on something like this. This one will do the trick. All right. Look at the the draw profile. Just take a good look at that. A bit stiff. We have a curved bottom draw, uh, straight serrations. We have an open area and then a like a parallel jaw with with uh, straight serrations. How interesting is that? Let's just. Uh, Grab onto a piece of this chain for fun. I just want to see how this how this goes. You're you're definitely getting a better grip than you would a standard needle nose or even a duck bill actually. It does want to twist, but it does not want to pull. Um, how about grabbing this way? Back here. Very interesting grip. Uh, very very cool. Um, and these are a. GC6 uh, Diamond USA, if you guys can make that out. Diamond USA. Very cool. This could be a long one, boys. Stick with me. <coughs> and uh, um, also, I was just going to say while I'm here, uh, <laughs> uh, check out the description below. If you're not following me on Instagram, please do so. We're actually going to be doing a small giveaway for 300 subscribers because y'all are so awesome. And I really appreciate y'all uh, subscribing and following and all everything. Uh, these are a bit rusty and I think actually a bit too tight. But uh, the jaws will clean up. They're not perfect, but they're not bad. Uh, these are definitely heated at some point. You see they're kind of case hardened. See that there? Cool look, but uh, the, the, the jaws might not be as hard as they once were. But I just made that out there. <clears throat> 
that is going to be almost impossible. <clears throat> I have a wire brush right here. One second, guys. <clears throat> Pardon me. Did that help at all? I want you guys to be able to see. So if you were looking at the garage sale, what you would have seen. That's really hard to make out. Uh, that's about as close as you're going to get right there. I don't know if you can make it out. But that is a telephone pole. Right. Right there. And the guy right there. This is a Klein. Klein Tools. Channel lock, water pump pliers. Tongue and groove pliers. Whatever you might call them. Uh, you know, they're, they're too tight. They need to be adjusted. Or just cleaned. But, yeah. Overall, great condition. Cut these handles. Uh, cut these handles down a little bit. So they're nice and good looking, and got a user. Uh, it was uh, on the dollar table. <sighs> Didn't have me a pair of end nippers yet, and these are like new, and they are a decent brand as well. These are some Palmeras from Spain. Yeah, real nice. These were two bucks. <laughs> Tickle in my throat, driving me crazy. Another quick drink. A water, by the way. I mean, no, not that I'm judging any of y'all. You do what you like, but I'm all here in the shop with all the, you know, dangerous equipment. You know, science speaks for itself. Uh, you guys know what these are as soon as you see them. Sorry about the shake. Uh, Channel Lock 317 made in USA. Overall great condition. Still, even, I don't know if you can see that. I believe that's still some of the original shellac finish down in there. These are actually buttery smooth. I mean, they're not buttery smooth, but the they're not full open smooth, but there's there's no friction in the joint or anything. A little oil. You can see some of the liquid patina coming out already. Yeah, these are nice. Uh, two bucks. <coughs> this, uh, nothing special, per se. Well, it's aluminum. Uh, so, pipe wrench. Nothing, nothing, like I said, nothing special, but it's aluminum pipe wrench. Doesn't matter what brand you get. These are expensive. This is a 14-inch, and it is a Westward brand. Uh, this is made in China or Taiwan. But this is at least $50, and I got it for $2. I don't own any aluminum pipe, aluminum pipe, aluminium <laughs> pipe wrenches. However you speak, you know what I'm saying. It's a difficult word, and uh, yeah, 350 mil, 14 inch aluminum pipe wrench. And just for fun, we run out of space. Can you just hang out there, buddy? Oh, come on. I know you're rusty. You still work, though. It was a good boy. There we go. There we go. You can just hang out there. Look at these big boys. That's one of the biggest slip joints I've seen. And it is a Proto number 280 Canada. A little tight. Uh, the jaws up here a little worse for wear. They're actually, they're caked in, in grit. They actually might be fine. There's those guys, two bucks. Go with my ever growing collection. Now guys, tell me, what exactly are these? I'll bring them in, I know I can look them up. This is a gray branded. As you guys know, I have a lot of gray tools, but they're normally made in Canada. This is a made in USA. So I think it might be a rebrand. <laughs> it could be rebranded by a lot of companies. I think it probably, more than likely, is rebranded by Lang. But I'm not exactly sure it is. A B100 gray. Hold on. Wait a minute. Oh, I just figured it out myself. Four external rings. So I see, look at this. It's got replaceable tips. That's why these things. I thought maybe these were uh, some sort of a CV boot pl uh, plier. Like that they 
did something along the lines of this for like uh, I don't know what I was thinking but you can see there there's slots so cool so I can order some tips for these these are like brand new I think the tips might have just fell out these screws are completely loose well, there's those guys. These are in the 50 cent pile. I don't think anyone knew what they were. Uh, nothing special, but these aren't cheap and they do spread. This is the oxygen sensor, socket, wrench, which you call her, offset, uh, Taiwan or China, but it's like new, rarely used. I actually like that it's uh, fluted here because I've had these and they can, if you, like I've uh, put a breaker bar on these, like a 3 8 to half adapter on a breaker bar, and I actually cracked the, the ears on these because they, they hit right in the corners when you're tightening or loosening. So there's that guy. That was 50 cents, I believe. Now let's do a few sockets. One a ton for sockets, that's okay. Uh, an Indestro 3 quarter 12 point. Uh, this one's a bit of a find, you don't see this every day. Say her brand. Canada 15 sixteenths actually oh, I was gonna say I thought we almost needed one for the, the setback there but 15 sixteenths quite a common use size overall but I don't find a lot of quality 15 16 sockets so that's always nice to have I'm actually gonna flick the heater on boys it's getting a tiny bit cold in here we right now it's just under 10 degrees in here but I'm just wearing a light hoodie because it was a gorgeous day uh, no branding or maker's mark on this that I can see, but I believe this is a like a, a chuck wrench, like for a lathe. How cool is that? I've never ran a lathe in my life, nor have I ever seen one in person. But if you guys watch uh, Abelm 79 or uh, Cutting Edge Engineering, uh, you'll definitely have seen these used, and I'm just happy to own one. And if you've ever got a a square plug or something you need to remove. I mean, you've got a nice quality T handle for it. Uh, this is my very first Bahako made in Sweden. What a beauty! Shout out to the European tool guys that have two million of these. Let's say A slash B, B A. Yorth and Co. Stockholm. Svirge. Svirge? Svirge? I'm Norwegian, but I don't speak it well. And not every time. Uh, this, this needs some work. This is the roughest thing here, I think, but I'm not passing that up. There's only a 50 cent table. <clears throat> don't worry, buddy. You're okay. If you guys remember, I had a uh, tool haul uh, a little bit back where I picked up uh, this uh, beautiful Grey Canada ratchet. I don't know if you remember what was wrong with it. Well, wrong. It was more than one thing wrong, but uh, we have the same thing here. <laughs> Heck yeah, buddy. That's that's how I use my, yeah, my wrenches too. You know, I like to reach under and fumble and you know, yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I don't know how this happens, uh, we got two different screws, that's definitely the factory one, I probably have a proper replacement for that, not a proto one, but a, a proper Phillips, uh, this is a proto, classic uh, pair head, right condition overall, works good even, in, even when it's in upside down, $2.00, this is getting long. That's okay. Again, how do I keep finding them? Lobster. Rock the lobster. I couldn't help myself. They work good. I actually like the the design here. They kind of look like a Kinnebex Cobra. I like that. They're a bit loose in the hips, but. We can fix that. <laughs> we can fix just about anything around here. And if we can't, we'll do our damnedest till it's breaking. Till it's broken. Like in English, I promise. 
Uh, to anyone, and your mother-in-law, this looks like a piece of trash. This is a chisel. I noticed that right away. And, I don't know, I guess I accustomed eyes. But I could tell that, that was a proto-professional. Add to my proto-chisel collection. <coughs> I believe proto makes <coughs> about 39 different chisels and punches. No, more than that. It's 59, and I think I have like 29 of them already, and I, I've never bought one new, so doing pretty darn good. This was on the 50 cent table. I think it was used as a paint stirrer. Uh, here we have the second pair of those Diamond USA interesting pliers. One dollar. You guys know how expensive this is. It's like, like new. It's a rigid pipe cutter. It's still got a good blade in it. Bearings are smooth. Oh, the top one, yeah, bottom one's smooth. Handle bearing smooth. What a find. I don't have, uh, I actually don't have any pipe cutters as of right now. Uh, most guys are using PEX these days anyway, but this is going to be handy. I'll probably use this for brake lines when I need to do them. Because here with the salt they put in the roads, it's not if you have to replace brake lines, it's when. Again, you guys will know these right away. These are a channel lock number 520. I think these are a six, six inch slip joints. They're nice. I think I have the eight inch version of these. But uh, I, like, I like smaller pliers like this. Because you can get a real good grip on them. Uh, the two buck table for that guy. I need the wire brush real quick. Oh, these are going to clean up nice. Barely touch them. So, guys, these are a Diamond USA. They are uh, part number RP8. Now, what exactly are these for? Look at the tips here. These have a, some sort of a dip on them. That doesn't want to come off. I don't know if that's factory. Looks cool. It's shiny. Uh, we've got a like a set screw here with a hex head. Sorry, I keep knocking the camera. Um, they're about eight inches or so long. What what is that head for? It's, it's sort of oval. It's beveled. Uh, it's convex here, concave here. Let's see that. Is this for holding pipe, or I really don't know. And then the set set screws, so they only close so far or whatnot. Very cool. Awesome to have in the collection. Great shape overall. Uh, I think they were two bucks. Uh, another first for me. Uh, in not the greatest of shapes. Oh, hold on. Let me grab the wire brush again. We're going to be busy in the shop. Here. Cleaning all this stuff up. And if you guys uh, were wondering, uh, pretty much anything I clean up, there will be Instagram pictures of. Holy shabanga boonie. Alright, so I was going to say, this is my first wooden handled uh, wrench of any sort. And it's actually really smooth. It's real. It's really tight still. Like it works good, and the jaws are in decent shape. The top jaw is a great shape. The bottom jaw needs a bit of work. Um, you see wooden handle. We'll have to see what we can do with that. I'll try and save it because I ain't no woodworker. I can't make that easily. You guys see that? This is a Ghidorah. Yeah, it's a Ghidorah. A Ghidorah. Ghidorah. Germany. I'm assuming this is German made. Uh, it could be India made, but it's more than likely German. This is awesome. This is a little uh, six inch. I think this is one of my favorite things I own. I, I love my pipe wrenches and adjustable wrenches. I just love them. I'm going to move that. I don't know why we had him sitting there. Uh, a few more sockets. Another Herbrand Canada. Deep half inch six point. Hold on, boys. Where's the... 
I think we need this for our set. Uh, I, I've got so many new socketries recently, everything's all over but I believe we need that for set actually, so that's pretty sweet. And here we have another Adestro 11 16 12 point. I'm making a little set. Uh, one more socket only, I think. Again, this is a 15 16 six point gray Canada with the knurl. This is the older one. Great condition overall. There's that guy. All the sockets were 50 cents a piece. And I believe that sheet didn't charge you for any of them. Um, this could be made literally anywhere. This style head design, I've seen a lot of players brand in Germany with this. These are a little loose in the hips, but look at that. Maybe top of the orange handle, but these are a KTM. Uh, that's uh, they make motorcycles. If, if any of you didn't know by somehow, uh, I actually love KTM bikes, they're amazing. And uh, I actually have a couple other KTM tools, so I'm happy to have these in the collection. I think they were two, two bucks. And going with that, <clears throat> we have a bottle opener wrench novelty tool, uh, Unior, and it's got KTM on this side. And some gunk, some schmoo. There's that guy. I don't think I got paid charge for that. I think it was on the 50 cent table. Right, let's get right into these guys. Best for last, right? <coughs> At least in uh, monetary value. Proto Canada half inch wrench. Overall great condition. Never have enough of these guys. There's a flare out wrench. 38716 Gray Canada. Like new overall. First of the pile, snap on OEX 18 USA, say 9 sixteenths. And ooh, this guy's going out for warranty. Is that guy? Uh, the wrenches were all a dollar or two dollars. Uh, but I don't think he charged me for most of his wrenches because they were in the bottom here. Uh, 5 sixteenths snap on OEX 100. This is Canada made. More modern snap on three quarter US of A OX 240. Sorry, we're going through this a little quick because I can, I think the camera's gonna get full here pretty soon. Uh, here's a Challenger Canada with a different uh, writing I haven't seen on any before. This is a 716 3/8 and it says manufactured can. I've never seen that before. So it's that guy. This is anything too special. Stubby ratcheting wrench, gear wrench. Works good, 17 millimeter. If you guys are wondering, that's the Canadian Tiger brand, Mastercraft Maximum, but it's a gear wrench. So there's that. It's a good place to save some money on your ratcheting wrenches. Here we have, I thought, I always thought this was VL check. it's a VEL check. Alloy Main USA, W1922, and it is the 11 16th, 1930 seconds. Double open end wrench. Very, very cool. And we have a half inch snap on uh, OX OXI 16B, a stubby half inch. I can see this getting a lot of use. Almost to the end, guys. You guys know I adore pipe wrenches, and look at this. We have a good old rigid Alera Ohio Ridge Tool Co. Oh my god. Two bucks. Oh, what's this? Oh, rigid. Ridge Tool Co. Alira. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys. And to finish her off, my very first Mac Ratchet. And it's in working shape. I need to contact Mac. The outside is fine, but I think we might have some stripped teeth because it's it sound a little rough. And if you push the switch, if you put any resistance on it, it barely wants to, to go at all. So, we'll see. But that's a find. Guys, that's the haul. Actually, hold on. This was everything from there. I did stop into the Habitat for Humanity Restore. I uh, picked up these old Fuller Canada hacksaw blades. They fit in a Fuller Canada hacksaw I have that doesn't take standard blades. And they were two bucks. And we got four more sockets. And I think these were 25 cents each. Stanley Challenger, three quarter, six point. This one's a Husky USA 11 16 six point. 
say Stanley Stanley Professional 916 six point and this is a Husky 1116 six point US of A so yeah three more bucks there so literally everything today $43 can't beat it I am extremely happy again check out the Instagram down below and uh, leave comments if you made it to the end uh, comment and lathe just for fun thank you for watching guys take it easy